we care about climate change. But the fact is we are a country where energy access is as much a challenge as climate change. We need to make sure that every Indian has access to, to energy. From what I understood, there are 300 million people without power, without yes. light here yes. in India. That's equivalent to the entire population of the United States. Namaste. <laughs> Today in villages, Indian villages, you will find people take cow dung and they make uh, what is known called cow dung cakes or uplas in Hindi and they burn those. And that's their only source of cooking energy. So they will make food now. Over there. <laughs> About 30% households in India are yet to have access to electricity. If you want to provide electricity to everybody, we have to ensure that our electricity is affordable. India has a vast reservoir of coal. We are probably the third or fourth largest reservoir of coal in the world. Coal is cheap. Whether you and I like it or not, coal is cheap. You have to think about this from this point of view. If you created the problem in the past, we will create it in the future. We have 700 million households who cook using biomass today. 700 million households. If those households move to coal, you have that much more use of fossil fuel. Then the entire world is fried. If anyone gives you this very cute stuff and tells you, oh, the world's poor should move to solar, and why do they have to make the mistakes that we have made? I hear this all the time right. from American NGOs. And I'm like, wow, you know, I mean, if it was that easy, I would have really liked the US to move towards solar, but you haven't. Let's put our money where our mouth is. We have to practice what we preach, absolutely. I'm sorry to say this, I know you're an American, and please don't take this amiss, but your consumption is going to really put a hole in the planet. And I think that's the conversation we need to have. I'll show you charts from this perspective. Electricity consumed by one American at home is equivalent to 1.5 citizen of France, 2.2 citizen of Japan, and 10 citizen of China, 34 of India, 61 of Nigeria. Why? Because you're building bigger, you're building more, and using much more than before. The fact is that we need to put the issue of lifestyle and consumption at the center of climate negotiations. Look, I, I, there's no way I don't agree with you. Mm. How can you argue that? I, you're absolutely correct. And I think, yes, it's a very difficult argument to present to Americans that we need to change our lifestyle. And I would also argue that it's probably not going to happen. So we are dependent, if we want to solve the climate crisis, on the fact that hopefully Renewables like solar and wind will become cheaper and cheaper and cheaper the more money we funnel into them, the more we invest into them, and ultimately it will solve that problem. But I, you, you, you're shaking your head, obviously. I'm so shaking you, with sort of Indian style, which means no. Right. <laughs> Who will invest? Leo, let's be real about this. Who will invest and how will you invest in it? We are doing more investment in solar today. China is doing much more investment in solar today than the US is. What is the US doing which the rest of the world can learn from? You're a fossil addicted country, but if you are seriously disengaging, it's something for us to learn from. And it'll be leadership that we can all hold up to our government and say, listen, if the US can do it, and the US is doing it, in spite of all their pressures, we can do it as well. The sad part of it is, it's just not happening. And people like me, we are rich enough to withstand the first hit of climate change. But it's the poor of India, it's the poor of Africa, it's the poor of Bangladesh who are impacted today by what I believe is the first signs of climate change. <laughs> So February, March, which is when the crops are standing, they got half the year's rainfall in just five hours. 